I drove through a damn snowstorm to see this. And now I feel like a huge dumbass for it. So Redeeming Love is another love story movie based on a book of the same name. Honestly guys, I didn't even know there was a book for this movie until the very first trailers were coming out. But this movie takes place at the end of the 1850s gold rush of California and centers around this blonde chick named Angel. She's a prostitute that has a very screwed up past. And I do mean a very screwed up past. She's got this huge chip on her shoulder to the point where she just sells herself off and doesn't really feel much of anything for herself or anyone else pretty much. But one day she meets this guy named Michael. And boy is my fucking man persistent. He falls in love with her, but she doesn't really feel the same about him. He convinces her to run away with him, and she starts developing feelings for him. Only problem is, she's never really felt true love before. So we end up following Angel through this movie as she learns what it's like to truly be loved by someone and watch her deal with the struggles of her past life and her own personal demons. So overall, guys, what did I think of Redeeming Love? You know what? I'm not even going to fucking sugarcoat it, guys. This movie's fucking horrible. <laughs> this movie is absolutely atrocious. Like, I can't even remember the last time I saw a movie this bad. Everything from the plot to the characters to the acting is just absolute garbage. Like, this movie managed to actually piss me off. And that rarely happens when I watch anything. It just felt like a huge waste of my time. Like, watching my fucking grass grow would have been more entertaining than this piece of shit was. So if you're confused, you're probably sitting there wondering, But Nathan, brother, what is it about this movie that pissed you off so much? First of all, the two main leads have no charisma and have no chemistry together whatsoever. And their acting performances are just so fucking painful to watch and to listen to. It's almost like watching one of those cringy-ass high school plays where everyone is trying their hardest to act. But everyone's acting is just so fucking bad that it makes you depressed. That is what the acting is like in this movie in a nutshell. And you don't buy them getting together, like, at all. Sure, they're both attractive and whatnot, but the story and situations that they get into just made me question... Why her? Because throughout the entire movie, my man Michael just has the biggest heart on for this chick, and he can't let her fucking go! Even after all the terrible and crazy shit that she puts him through, he still decides, nope, this, this, this chick is the one. And she is a bitch too, man. Oh my god. Like, some of the shit she does in this movie is so ridiculous and two-faced that if this was real life, he would have stopped trying after she runs away for a third time and gives his brother a blowjob, that way she'll take her back to her old-ass shitty life. That's not a joke, by the way. That is actually something that happens in the movie. So as a result, you don't like her, and because he's such a fucking dumbass, you don't end up liking him either. Like, like honestly, how do you not see that the bitch is crazy? And they try, they try very hard to make you care about this chick. And how do they do that? by just essentially just overloading on flashbacks. Now, I have seen movies where the flashback method has worked, but by the time they start trying to explain why she is the way she is, the damage is already done, and I just don't give a shit. And also, this movie has some of the most cringe-worthy dialogue I think I've seen in any movie in a very long time. And I'm talking, like, right up your spine kind of cringe. Like the scene in the movie where he goes to meet her for the first time. Not even two minutes in a room with her and he's just like, Damn there, baby. I'm gonna marry you. Okay, he didn't exactly say it like that, but... But, yeah, he essentially just looks at her and goes, I, I, I'm gonna marry you. <laughs> this man has either had no kind of pussy in his life, or the writers of this movie just can't write good dialogue worth anything. I'm going to go with option two. It just comes off as forced and just poor. Like I said, they're both unlikable and cringy, and that's where movies like this fall apart. For love stories like this to work, the characters have to be likable. 
and you have to be able to buy the fact that they're growing a relationship. If none of those things are present, then your movie is already doomed before it even starts. And I know people are going to defend it because this movie is based on a very popular book, supposedly. Like, I can see people going, But her being unlikable is just part of the story. That way he could come in and change her for the better. That's why it's called redeeming love. And although I can see why people would say that, they repeat the same fucking story beat throughout the whole movie. And it honestly just adds to her unlikability. He saves her, then she lives with him right before going back to her old life. He saves her again, she lives with him, and then she goes back to her old life again. He saves her, then she lives with him, and then she goes back to her old life yet again. That literally happens three times in this movie. Two hours and five minutes of that. Like, it's so stupid that I can't even put it into words anymore. And sure, they finally get together and live happily ever after by the end. But this is after two hours of five minutes of these two idiots just being unlikable and their supposed romance being forced as fuck. And because of that, by the end, I don't care that they're together now. You have failed on every level to make me care about these characters. Epically. Like, they could both die horribly grisly deaths, and I wouldn't have felt a thing. If anything, that would have been more entertaining to watch. Because that would have been intriguing. Guys, Redeeming Love just bored and annoyed me at the same time. And I know some people are going to think I'm hating on it just for the sake of hating on it. Because I'm a guy, and I supposedly don't get the message that the movie is trying to tell me. And that's not true at all. I've seen a lot of romance movies that are good and actually work. This movie, on the other hand, just didn't fucking work. But the ones that are good had characters that I give a shit about and plots that are intriguing and easy to like. There is none of that in Redeeming Love. Like, I wanted these two idiots to just die horribly in a fire. That way this cringy bullshit story would just end. This movie is bad, like coleslaw. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for listening to my review on Redeeming Love. I know I probably did get a little annoying because I do have a tendency to rant and rave from time to time. But you got to understand, this movie pissed me off really bad. So I just, I hope that this review still sounded like a review to you guys. Next movie I'll be seeing after this is Jackass Forever. And I think that comes out on... February 4th, I'm sure. January was a lot of fun, guys, and you guys really seem to like listening to my opinions on these movies. So I can't really thank you guys enough for all your support through the first month of 2022. Let's shoot for that 500 sub mark. I know we can do it. February is shaping up to be a really good month for film. I have six movies I gotta see next month. Six! I can't really wait to see what happens next month, but that's all for now. But anyway, guys, drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new. And please let me know in the comments below if there are any movies you guys want to see me review personally. Like the other day, I watched 300. It was on Netflix. It was an afternoon. I just just wanted to watch 300. I wouldn't mind doing reviews on you know movies that are already out. So just kind of let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see me do anything like that. But as always, this is Nathan Triner. I'm saying peace, and I'll see you guys next time for more Fireforged movie reviews. Peace out, everybody.